Welcome. Let's Hello, begin Dr. with the Manish last chapter Ji. for NCERT Class 8 Science that talks about the pollution of the air and water. Now, before we begin with understanding what is pollution and why we need to understand it, let's first talk about uh, what basically causes pollution. So, let's say you are into a garden or an open space. The air is very clean. You are happy sitting around in the region there. But suddenly you have a huge lot of traffic that is going from that region and it creates a lot of smoke, dust and suspended particles into the air. So what happens now? What happens is a contamination. So this is a contamination of the existing air that is seen and because of this contamination what we get is air pollution. Now whatever contaminants are present are known as pollutants. So these pollutants lead to air pollution. So that's very very important. Now when there is air pollution what would happen? It would lead to respiratory difficulties, asthma, uh, coughing, wheezing. So all those are common uh, things that we can understand are caused because of a bad air or impure air or polluted air. Now if we look about onto the picture of the composition of the air, we say 78% of the air is nitrogen. You have around 21% that is oxygen. Now, if there is carbon monoxide that is present, very, very important, this carbon monoxide binds with the oxygen, uh, with the hemoglobin rather than oxygen, allowing oxygen to bind. And what it forms is the carboxyhemoglobin. Now this carboxyhemoglobin has much higher affinity as compared to oxygen and this creates respiratory suffocation and respiratory problem. So definitely polluted air is harmful for plants, it's harmful, harmful for animals and the human beings as well. So what we need to understand is the kind of pollution that's basically there and why does it occur so this pollution basically occurs because of the various uh, processes like uh, industrial exhaust that is coming up the traffic pollution that's there and you have the various activities that are part of it all these activities together lead to the pollution into the atmosphere now as we said you have the particulate matter that goes into the atmosphere and that is what is polluted mainly in the form of smoke and dust this comes mainly from factories power plants oil refineries you have burning of fire fuels now this has a common concern in delhi these days where you have the burning of crop residue now this crop residue is dry when it is dry and is burned, it releases uh, harmful pollutants into the atmosphere and leads to air pollution. Similarly, you have the incomplete burning of the fuels that take place and this incomplete burning of the fuel, very very important to note, is major reason for formation of carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide. So incomplete burning of fossil fuels lead to carbon monoxide and that's a very probable question for your examination perspective. A very interesting fact in this line is if you take all the vehicles of Delhi and you try to uh, put them one after the another, you would find that they form a length as long as a combined length of two rivers which are among the major rivers of the world which are Nile and Amazon. So the combined length of Nile and Amazon river would form the length of all the vehicles that are present in Delhi and therefore pollution becomes a very major concern specifically in these regions. So we understand how factories are leading to pollution and how these pollution issues can be bargaining. Now, we have come across a very important term, smog. This smog was a major concern in China a few years back where you had a very, very severe China smog that was there. Commonly seen in the regions of NCR, the National Capital Region of Delhi. What happens actually is the smoke combines with fog and therefore it occurs predominantly in the winter months. You have asthma, cough, wheezing that is commonly seen because of this uh, smog that is there. Now, 
let's understand about the pollutants we have talked about the major exhaust going in to the air these are in the form of nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide you have cfc chlorofluorocarbon you have carbon monoxide carbon dioxide so these are some of the common gases that we see now carbon dioxide we can say it's because of the power plants carbon monoxide we already said is due to incomplete burning of the fossil fuels cfc is mainly released from refrigerators and acs then you have sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide these are released from uh, the various industrial processes and one very important thing to understand is these sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide are the primary responsible elements for the formation of oh, acid rain no. now what would happen you have water that reacts with nitrogen dioxide it forms nitric acid similarly you have water that reacts with sulfur dioxide and it forms sulfuric acid both of these are the reasons for acid rain and because of this acid rain we have the severe impact that is seen a good example to trace this out is the yellowing of the taj mahal that is seen in agra and that is also known as this acid rain also causes what is known as marble cancer so it's badly affecting the marble from akrana that is used to make the taj mahal and that specific white marble is slowly and gradually yellowing out so <clears throat> that's again very very important when we are talking about smog per se one very important element to understand is this smog reduces the visibility now since the visibility is reduced it can lead to a much higher amount of accidents much higher amount of road casualties so smog is a very very severe problem in the regions which are polluted specifically in the urban areas in the winter months so that's how we understand this now again uh, we have sometimes tiny ash that comes out which is known as soot so this soot is also affecting the uh, region around now let's talk about taj mahal as we said you have the yellowing of the taj mahal that is taking place that's because of the oil refinery in mathura the rubber plants nearby the chemical industries nearby and all these release sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide into the atmosphere when it reacts with water it forms sulfuric acid and nitric acid leading to acid rainfall and this acid rainfall leads to what is known as marble cancer and yellowing of this taj mahal so what is promoted is a cleaner fuel now what can be a cleaner fuel it could be by means of cng it could be means of lpg so those are some of the important things that we need to understand and therefore we say acid rain affects the soil and the plants badly so we need to work around the issues of air pollution at a very high priority the next important element that we would talk about is greenhouse gas now what happens as a part of greenhouse gas you have the earth layer and the sun now when the sun rays fall onto the earth you have a little of which that is absorbed and a part of that which is reflected now what is absorbed and what is reflected the remaining forms a kind of layer that is seen and that's what is known as greenhouse effect so what is trapped into the atmosphere is the greenhouse effect that leads to warming of the earth surface now once you have the warming of the earth surface why this is um, basically promoted that that is promoted because of carbon dioxide methane that's another gas then you have water vapor to some extent so these are the major gases that lead to warming of the earth and they are considered as greenhouse gases which lead to greenhouse effect now this greenhouse effect leads to warming because of this forming what would happen you would have slow and gradual rise in the temperature of the earth that is seen so this rise in the temperature of the earth leads to a phenomena which is known as global warming 
what would happen as a result of global warming again very interesting because of this global warming you would have melting of the glaciers that would take place so melting glaciers as a result the water level uh, would rise so rise in the water level would be seen and finally you would have a uh, submergence of the islands that are present Pali 2 is one of the islands of Lakshadweep which recently vanished off because of the rise in the sea level. Now these are some of the important consequences that we need to understand because of the gases being released into the atmosphere. You have the temperature that increases, the warming that occurs which is known as greenhouse effect and this warming leads to rise of the temperature which is known as global warming. So that's one of the important things that we need to understand. Now what happens to curb this problem? We need to do first of all a mass transportation must be uh, promoted so metros, uh, city buses are some of the ways through which we can promote mass transport rather than uh, kind of carpooling could be a good example. So that reduces the amount of emission into the uh, atmosphere. So in Delhi we have the CNG buses that are up. Now this CNG and unleaded petrol that we talk about basically help to reduce the level of pollution. Again, you have a constant monitoring that is being done by the government agency. You have AQI which is the air quality index. This index shows the level of air quality in the region. We have numerous alternative sources of energy that are up. So solar energy, hydel energy, wind energy uh, are some of the common energies that we talk about. And these are alternate sources. They are renewable. They are non-exhaustible. To promote the growth of trees around, we have efforts like one Mahotsav that takes place in July every year. So the idea is to plant more trees. Now why plant more trees? So that's again an important question. These trees basically consume carbon dioxide as we have seen in class 7th. Now when they are consuming carbon dioxide, what would happen? This carbon dioxide as we saw is a greenhouse gas. Now since this carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the plant, it acts as a carbon sink. The forests act as a carbon sink and reduces the amount of carbon dioxide present into the atmosphere, preventive, preventing the amount of warming that takes place. So therefore, planting more trees one Mahotsav is one of the major efforts in, in this direction. As we said in Delhi, you have a lot of crop residue being burned and that's one of the major causes of air pollution in Delhi because of the burning of crop residues in the regions of Punjab and Haryana. So the right way to use this is to leave the dry uh, leaves there itself. Over the time, they would decompose and become compost and this compost could be further used. So use of compost is something that's really, really important to understand. So planting new trees, planting saplings is something that's really important. So far, we were talking about air pollution. Coming on to water pollution. Water pollution is a similar to air pollution. The only difference is the water bodies are polluted because of the presence of impurities that's being discharged into the water systems through agriculture, through industry or through sewage. Now, when it is discharged, it leads to increase in the toxic amount, the toxic chemicals that are there, silt that is present. So <clears throat> what happens is you have lead, arsenic and fluorine as one of the major uh, toxic elements that are present because of uh, this pollution in the water systems. So the pollutants which are affecting the water systems are known as water pollutants and the uh, contamination of the water bodies leads to water pollution. The water pollution can be divided into two types point source and non-point source. So what is point source of pollution? Point source of pollution is a piece from, is a point or a place from where the pollution originates. So source of uh, the industrial discharge could be one of the regions. The source of municipal discharge could be one of the regions. 
so that's the point where the pollutant enters into the river system non point sources of pollution cannot be basically identified from where the pollution is originating so all the agricultural runoff that is blowing uh, flowing into the water systems the acid rainfall that is falling into the water systems are all non point sources because you cannot exactly locate the point where the pollution starts or begins so in order to check this amount of pollution ganga river was one of the major things that we talk about and what was important to understand is the conservation of ganga started with ganga action plan uh, ganga action plan started in 1985 then you have the national clean ganga mission that was started to clean the river ganga Kanpur is one of the most polluted cities lying on the bank of Ganga river uh, you have more than uh, 2000 industries that are present there many stretches of ganga river are considered dead now that means the pollution level is so high in the water body that uh, it's basically of no use most of the um, microbial growth is absent in that region and you have severe oxygen deficiency in the water that leads to killing of the aquatic life that is present to the water systems in those region so ganga action plan national mission for clean ganga are some of the important things that we have talked about uh, then what we need to understand is the chemicals and the industrial discharge that go into the water must go through the various treatment processes so this treatment plants are really really important to understand now how can we purify water there could be various stages as we have seen in the previous lectures one is by boiling the water you are killing out the germs one is by filtration so all the sediments settle down by chlorination you are adding chlorine and disinfecting the water by distillation you are removing all kind of impurities that are present into the water system so these are four important ways that we have talked about now a very important question that comes up for you here is if you look onto a pond it looks green from the distance why does it look green that's because of the growth of algae now why this growth of algae occurs when you have excessive chemicals that is flowing into the fields you have algae that tries to flourish now once these algae die off what would happen the decomposers would eat those algae so they become food for the decomposers and as a result a lot and lot of oxygen that's present into the water is being used so oxygen gets used up and finally what happens is you have a oxygen deficit water system that is present as a result all the um, growth of the animals or the aquatic Uh, organisms that is there is being affected because of the oxygen deficiency in the water system which is also known as bod biological oxygen deficiency which we would understand in detail in the higher classes to go so for now this is the basic idea and we need to understand that this treatment plant is important in order to have us safe drinking water which is also known as potable water around 25% population of the world do not have access to safe clean drinking water so getting potable water safe clean drinking water is very very important priority that we need to understand so with this we cover our last chapter for ncert class 8 we'll be continuing with further chapters in the upcoming session so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead